Greetings, Surger fans. I'm Amy Bachman from amysews.com, the home of the Power Surger subscription box and lots of other fun things too. But today we're working on our serger and you can see over my shoulder, we're making this beautiful, I'm gonna show you how to make this beautiful bow tie quilt block on your serger. It's very fast, it's very easy. And of course it's a lot of fun because it's fast and easy. Um, it's gonna be some, just some simple squares and I'm gonna show you how to set that up. Now this is just a three thread function on your serger. All sergers have it. I'm using my left needle, my upper looper, and my lower looper, okay? But I'm gonna stitch off so you can see um, how I can maybe get myself a quarter inch on my serger. Now it doesn't have to be a perfect quarter inch, like your little forgiveness in this block, but it's good to know how to do that um, with your serger. So let's go ahead and take a peek. So I'm going to just serge and I'm just gonna cut off the pokies. I'm really not gonna trim because your pieces are gonna be perfectly cut. So the more you trim, it kind of makes your block wonky, which is the last thing we wanna use. So just kind of like skim the blade if you have any little extras sticking out. And I'm gonna take and I'm going to measure a quarter inch. Now you can see I'm a little, little larger than a quarter inch. So this is the Bernina L890. She's kind of a Cadillac and um, I'm kind of blessed to have one to play with, but it has two adjustments. The first adjustment you everybody has is a blade width where it adjusts that blade, the cutting blade, or what we call the bite, left and right. And I'm gonna turn mine down to five. And there's also a fine tune here, which I love. So you have three stitch fingers on your serger. It moves that outside stitch finger in or out to kind of help you fine tune um, your stitch. So I'm gonna put mine at plus one and I'm gonna cut away this time because it doesn't matter. I just wanna see the width of my stitch. And my stitch length is at 2.5, it can be at two. Any, any sh no tighter than that, you're gonna have some issues if you have to rip out. So that is, I could tell right here, the perfect uh, quarter inch. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to measure, to do a couple stitches to make sure you can get as close to a quarter inch as possible. And you wanna be consistent. So that is the key. But these are um, some of the supplies you're going to need. Okay, so these are just charm squares. They're five inch pieces, right? You can pick them up at any quilt shop. This had a 42 pack in it. And um, we have them here at the store, um, which is amybachman.com. Um, but anyhow, it's 42 pieces in here. But what you need is you need doubles of every piece. So in one charm pack, even though I had 42 pieces, I got 12 blocks that I could, um, I could put together that were pairs, except I have one kind of wonky block. So if you don't mind scrappy, then you can use um, all the all the charm squares. You can just run a row of them and piece them into your back if you'd like, or make some cute coasters or something else with them. So I cut it. I went ahead and cut from the bolt because I wanted to show you matching squares because I really think it looks better. So what I want is. Uh, Scoot down a little bit. You need two five inch squares of your decorative fabric or pretty fabric, and you need three squares of the same size. Now, charm squares were easy, right? So I didn't have to, to worry, about, worry about it. Let's change these up. And I need one for the bow tie. So I just chose a solid red so the bow tie itself would stick out. So here's a finished block that you can see. And you can see the bow tie in the middle is dimensional. Now I did not, when I pressed my seams, I did not press in the middle. If you want to press in the middle, you can. You just have very flat, flat bows. So it's a personal preference, okay? So it takes three solids or three contrasting and two of your charm square prints. And if 
you can do your bow pieces and like your centerpiece in a different color, but it kind of loses a little bit of its, um, what do I want to say, its dimension. It looks kind of flat because you can't really tell it's a bow. You have to look really hard. Um, it would be nice if you're going to make this out of a baby project that maybe these were um, like a soft suede or a minky or something for texture for the baby to play with. So this is a super simple block for you to play with. So I don't care if these are 10 inch squares, six inch squares, eight inch squares, five inch squares, as long as they're all the same size square. So we're gonna take our bow square and we're going to fold it in half. And don't press it, we're just folding it um, wrong sides together. And uh, batiks, of course, are easy because you really can't tell, and solids you really can't tell, so it works out pretty well. I'm going to take a square, a, a red square, and lay my folded rectangle on top, right sides together. So I have a sandwich. I have my decorative fabric, I have my folded bow uh, center, and I have my red square. And we're going to hop over to the serger, and we are going to, let me raise this up a little bit. I'm just going to stitch these. So when I stitch them, the short guy, it's the short side that's in the middle, all the raw edges are at the top. And you're just going to sew these, lining up all your raw edges. So take a couple stitches, you know, just to kind of get your needle anchored, and then line everybody, line everybody up. And again, I just chain off So this is what we made. We have this little flap in the middle. So now we're going to hold it by the flap and kind of fold these guys out of the way. Whatever is on top, you're gonna to put the opposite on top. So we have our solid, I'm gonna put the print on top and I'm gonna put the solid red underneath. And we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna sew. All the raw edges are at the top of the block. The fold is in the middle. You can see I'm just kind of cutting away the extra strings or the pokies. Now when you go, oops, sorry about that. When you go around and sew off your seam, don't yank because what happens is this seam starts to buckle, it starts to pull in. So either use your cutter or your scissors. And this is what you have. Right? <laughs> kind of like this goal post type situation. We're gonna do right sides together. And we're gonna do right sides together. So see how the red guy is kind of flopping in the middle? We're gonna open it up. Now this is where it could, could get a little tricky because it's kind of hard to open it up. I open it up and I push one seam one way and one seam the other, realizing we have such bulky seams. Let me get these tails all the way so you can see. So I lined up my seams. I have one push to the left, one push to the right, and I don't use a lot of pins with my sergers. I use the wonder clips. Now it's a little trickier to bring this edge up into the seam. What you do not want to do, you do not want to have a pucker there. So if you have a pleat of any kind, what's going to happen is you're going to have a crinkle in your bow tie. So let me go ahead and just stitch this for you. Of course, this is why I like clips because it's almost impossible to run them over. Well, I guess anything's possible. <laughs> now this guy is a little trickier because you can see it's kind of pleated up in there and so you're just gonna tuck it up with your finger, bring those raw edges over. Once you do a couple, you get kind of, um, kind of used to it. I'll release the middle. Raw edge, tuck that little pleat out of the way. 
it's a little harder for me to do it and show you than it is to do it without showing you. Sometimes you can poke that little corner out. And again, my seams are going the opposite directions. Just make sure that's in there. Get those raw edges together. Come on, everybody. Well, you may get a pleat. I might as well show you what it looks like when it's bad so you know how to fix it. Open it up. And there is our bow tie. So that is what your edges should look like, okay? So every square is that simple. I'll do the layout one more time so you can see. You're gonna have your charm squares. On opposite corners, you're gonna have a contrast. And then you're gonna have your bow tie fabric, your bow middle, I should say. You're gonna fold it like a hot dog or like a rectangle. You're gonna line up your raw edges along the top. Gonna put your other piece on and you're gonna make a sandwich. And then we're gonna surge these guys down. And this is what you have. You have this little guy flopping in the middle. You're gonna open it up. Whatever is on the top, you're gonna do the opposite. And we're gonna lay this guy right here, right sides together. Make sure everything is lined up nicely. you have this kind of wiggly woggly goal post you're going to pick them up right sides together you're going to open up the center piece let me trim these for you i think it's time to find a scissor sharpener i always end up with the worst stuff in my studio so we're going to push one left push one right use a clip and see how nicely that one folded, how nicely this one folded. We're gonna just sew through it. in the way. Make sure we don't have a pleat. Keep everybody lined up real nice. And there is your beautiful bow tie. So how easy was that? It's so fun. So you can see over my shoulder, there's uh, nine blocks. You can get 12 blocks, but remember you have that one kind of wonky one, so it's your call. Or if you wanna cut your own five inches or buy two charm squares and make it as big as you want. So this is just a super simple layout. You can see that um, I just did sashings across the bottoms of the blocks, a long sashing in between, and then I'm gonna put gray sashing all the way around it. So there's nothing hard here. So you just uh, measure your block. Now, if you wanna press, right? I just pressed these outside edges so I did not crush my bow. It's up to you. I've known some ladies to put like a little piece of um, fiber fill in here when you were surging it. 
it just kind of um, takes a little bit more time, that's all. So that's possibly your, your call, whatever you want to do. And then you're just going to add your sashing piece. And again, right sides together. Right sides together. And measure your blocks, right? So mine measured nine and a half inches, which would be right because I had five and five is ten. Quarter inch seam allowance on each side. So I had a nine and a half inch block. Just going to add right sides together, my sashing piece. And again, just a quarter inch. And if you have uh, any thread tails, make sure the thread tails are towards. towards the outside so they get cut off. Now one thing about serger threads when they are um, crossed over or intersected they kind of knot themselves off which is kind of nice. So this is what a good three thread overlock looks like. My upper and lower looper are perfectly formed on the edge I've got a nice tight seam. When I look at the back, it's the same way. Upper and lower loopers along the edge and a nice tight needle thread. So when I pop this open and I tug, you'll see a little needle thread, but it shouldn't open all the way up. But that's all there is to making this super simple um, project. So this project um, that you're watching has been, um, is a bonus for those who belong to the Power Surger subscription box, which is bi-monthly. And um, you get a box and a class, you get a live class, and then you get a recorded class. So you get your supplies in the mail. Um, we do a couple check-ins. We do a couple live updates. How are you doing? I give you a little pattern and some goodies in your box, plus the supplies. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, if you'd like more, then just hop on the wait list for the Power Surger subscription box, because the more you know, the more you sew.